Hi, I'm Larell Clark, founder of Ditch the Weight. I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. I've had the desire to own my own business since I was a child. I can remember being in the fifth grade, creating a shirt that actually rinsed off by itself without having to wash it. Um, but that didn't go so well. Uh, I actually started this business out of a love for food and it actually developed into something really great, which happened to be a food service that connected customers to different vendors. The business started out where we would connect customers to food trucks where the customers would be standing outside and they'd be waiting in line, typically for 30 minutes to an hour for their food, when in reality, they only had that much time to eat lunch. And so the name Ditch the Weight came as a thought of how people could avoid standing in line from food trucks. The reason why I wanted to start my own business is that I was typically tired of working a nine to five job. Being at home with my kids for just less than two hours in a day, rushing, getting them home about eight o'clock at night from working 10 hour shifts at work and having little hours to spend with them, rushing to cook food, eating out all the time. And then on the weekends, being so tired from working during the week, it really gave me the desire to want to work for myself. And so uh, my husband and I, we came up with the idea that we would connect um, customers to different restaurants um, via dining services. But after talking to a friend, um, he suggested that we started out with food trucks. And so we thought through the process. It took about three years for us to actually come up with an idea and work through all of the processes and actually getting the app um, developed. And so I think from 2015 to 2018, we um, started working out all of the kinks and then we launched the beta version of our app in April of 2018 or it could have been May of 2018. And um, from that, you know, we knew that we wanted to be entrepreneurs where we could, you know, live life on our terms and not have to worry about whether or not our kids saw us or, you know, was missing us or whether or not we were being happy being employed by someone else. So my husband, I, we talk quite often about me leaving work and <laughs> he was like, my number one champion for me leaving work. And I talked to him constantly. I know one day I was at work, I had an issue and I came home and I had a headache for hours. I could not sleep. I was restless. And, you know, my husband was like, well, let me pray for you. And he prayed for me and I was able to go to sleep. And he had said to me that I should never be that stressed out at work. And it wasn't necessarily, um, the people, so to speak, or the work that I was doing, but it was just me being dedicated to something that wasn't my own. And so the system was already in place and there wasn't much room for improvement in different areas. You give your input and you give, you know, what you think may be able to improve processes at work, but typically they're stuck in their ways and they're going to do things the way that they want to do them. And so after talking with my husband, trying to find the right time, where I could leave work, um, the opportunity came and presented itself where an early out or early retirement um, was to be taken. And so my husband and I, we had a discussion as to whether or not I could leave work. And he was like, when you're ready to make that jump, just make that jump. It's time to make that leap. So we decided on a day where I would submit my letter of resignation. It wasn't easy because I felt like I was betraying my supervisor and my manager um, who had just recently brought me to that department. But ultimately, I submitted my paperwork and I took the early retirement. And October 31st, 2017 was my last day working at a place that I've been working at for nearly 11 years. And it wasn't easy. It was very scary. Um, it hasn't been easy. It's been very stressful. Um, it has been unpredictable and I am starting to see a little light at the end of the tunnel, but I know this is just the beginning. And so I'm looking forward to what's coming ahead. But I know um, the trials and tribulations of a business owner is definitely real. Um, sleepless nights, long days, 
Um, like I said, you really can't predict where your next dollar is going to come from, where your next um, business connect is going to come from, and even whether or not your product is something that people want. And so for me, I realized that you have to be fluid in business and you have to be open to what the people are saying, what they're asking for, and also being true to yourself and what it is that you have a desire and a passion for. So the services that Dish the Way offer, it it changed. It initially started out as a business to business and a business to consumer business where we connected different people to food trucks in the area. And so customers would order online a platform like Uber Eats, so to speak, where you would go online and order your food in advance, select a time, select your food, pay for it, and then just show up to the food truck and collect your food and go. But that business sort of slowed down because in the food service industry for food trucks, typically it gets rather slow in the wintertime. And so a lot of people weren't really using the app. And so we had to pivot and find a way that we could make money during the winter season. And the idea came to doing the delivery service. And so we reached out to one of our friends who was a local chef in the area, and she actually needed service um, for meal prep delivery. And so we started out doing meal prep delivery for her, and then it turned into meal prep delivery for other companies. And then other companies who did catering, they wanted deliveries for the catering services. And so we expanded into that area. In addition to that, we provided grocery shop for these chefs who did not have the time or do not have the time to run to the store, stop what they're doing, shop, come back, cook the food. And so we've done that. And primarily it's been more of a delivery service. As far as what separates us from other companies, we primarily focus in on small businesses. And so we're not at the point of using a business where they're just starting out trying to get their name out in the industry. And so they're doing everything, going to the customer themselves so that they can be recognized. And we're not dealing with the customer who or business who is already established, big box business. They're already in the industry. They're using shipments um, via 18 wheelers and things like that. We're not doing that. So we're in the in-between stages. We're using um, our services as being used by local chefs, smaller um, chefs who may not necessarily have a kitchen, um, who may not necessarily have a storefront or a food truck, but they also have a customer base where they need to get their food out. And so for us, we cater specifically to that demographic of businesses. And we recognize that there's a need for this service as far as delivery service in the catering industry and the meal prep um, industry, because a lot of people want convenience. And so we provide that. We're integral. We try to make things a lot simpler and easier for our partners. And so what we do is we come in and we do the things that they don't want to do. We provide the service that they don't have time to provide. And so we come in, we collect the meals, we deliver the meals. It's on time. And we have great customer service when doing it. We go the extra mile. If they need help with packaging things, we do that. When we get to the site, if they need help with setting up, we do that as well. And so we've understood that there's a need that's unmet that is also one where people feel that they need to connect with a person. And so we do that. So yes, we are the business that built other businesses. We actually received a compliment the other day on how um, they the partner is very happy to have us because we've allowed them to expand their business. We've given them an opportunity to get more jobs because we're now connecting them to their customer without having to leave the kitchen. And so it affords them the opportunity to get their food out to more people and it's really lucrative for them in that way. And so this, the food service industry is a $50 billion a year industry. And with this industry, everything is about convenience now. If you look at a particular food model, you have your Chipotle's, um, your Subway's, those types of businesses where you can go in and get your food fast in and out the door. 
you have Uber Eats and Grubhub where you can order your food in, in minutes and within an hour, your food is at your door. You have um, different places like Amazon where they're opening up grocery stores and people can have their food delivered directly to their house. Um, you have typical grocery stores like Giant um, and Safeway where you can order your food online and you can go to the store and you can pick it up without having to wait. And people are looking for convenience. And so we're looking to provide that service to our customers. We want to make things as convenient as possible so that they don't have to work as hard. You know, and I understand that if we can be that bridge where we can connect them to their customer in a more efficient way, then that is what we're looking to do. And we also recognize that the industry is growing with technology, that things are going to change and that we have to be prepared for the change. And we're looking to do that. So we're expanding um, our thoughts into new and different ways to deliver. We're looking for ways to um, do that via app, also um, other technology that may be made available as time progress. Final thoughts would be, um, don't be afraid to do business with anyone. Um, you want to do business in an integral way with integral people, but business is business. And it's just like riding a bike. Once you get into it, you never, you don't forget how to do it. And so I would offer advice to anyone that's looking to possibly leave their job or um, start an idea that they may have had on their heart to do. I would give you the advice to do it. Just take that step. You know, you can always go back to work for somebody. Jobs are out here, but you can't always work for yourself. And so while you have the time, while you have the desire to do things that is in your heart to do, my suggestion would be to do those things. And even if you don't know what to do, just get started doing something. There's always a service that's needed. People are always looking for something to be done for them. And whether it's a product or a service, you can always make money and always look for um, opportunities. And if you're looking for someone to help, look out for a mentor in that same industry. Maybe reach out to a family friend or someone um, you may have gone to school with or a professor or somebody um, who you see in that industry that may be doing well, that can give you direction as to how you should operate or where you should go or the things you should do. And also, um, as for me, I'm really excited about what's coming ahead for Ditch the Weight. Um, we are expanding and we're growing and we're looking to expand our business by employing other drivers to deliver food so that we can grow the business in that way. Ditch the Weight can be found on social media at D-I-T-C-H-T-H-E-W-A-I-T via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and the link will be posted in this video.